Hello and welcome to The Nightcap. It's life behind the Michelin star, a late night lock-in here where we candidly discuss and debate all things culinary over a few drinks. Right now I'm sat upstairs at Salt Restaurant in Stratford-upon-Avon, Shakespeare's home in the heart of Warwickshire. It is just gone nine o'clock at night. Service is wrapping up downstairs shortly. Let me introduce myself and what the hell we're all doing here. My name is Simon Alexander. I'm a podcaster, producer and daytime cooking show contestant. To my left, playing host, head chef of Salt and owner... Mr. Paul Foster. How you doing? You are right, yeah? Good, thanks, mate. And our guest today is Chef Patron at the Flintlock, a GBM contestant and a social, well-timed, social media powerhouse. It's Mr. Tom Bateman. How you doing, buddy? I'm really good, mate. Excellent. Powerhouse. I, well, I, th- that. I think that's fair. Yeah. I'd say so, I yeah. That's bloody fair. Yeah, I'll, t- I'll take yeah. it. How was dinner downstairs first? Yeah, I'll grab that for you. How was dinner? <laughs> it was fucking wonderful man. was it like second time in a month that like, i'm so yeah. happy i know so i saw that i couldn't you came a couple of a couple of weeks ago basically yeah, yeah with your wife wasn't it a couple yeah, of weeks yeah, ago, yeah. Was, yeah yeah nice. which was you know wonderful but nice to do on your own as yeah. well <laughs> <laughs> peace and quiet i mean like, i so, love talking about it i mean only a few weeks apart was there how much crossover are we talking to some dishes being similar or tweaked or you know because it's quite an unusual thing to come to well, somewhere like this well, what was apart. really good about it was that all my favorite ones from the first time were still there yeah oh, so nice. i got the best of both because like the new ones i had Oh, I just tipped it over there. It's because we heard you slagging the shit one. <laughs> so we got rid of them. <laughs> oh, yeah. Really, really good. That beef and the artichoke, man. That's so I was good. Just ask, is that your standout one, was it? <sighs> you, can't, you can't move away from the carrot, can you? Like, I mean, what? <laughs> what if that is just like something that everyone should eat, right? It's amazing. I always wonder is it something that you're like, we've got to keep the carrot? And Laura's like, Paul, can we just leave? And you're just like, come on, let's keep going. Well, I don't, we don't have that conversation really, but um, uh, I mean, they do it more than me, but it must get a bit monotonous. <laughs> I, if I was in the kitchen all the time, uh, as I used to, I, I'd be so fed up of it, like so fed up. But when I was in the kitchen day in, day out, it was never on my section, so mm. it's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I would change it in a, in a heartbeat because I just get bored so easy. I just, I can't it's do just this. just when you get to the bottom. That, yeah. that, that, that spoon right. of joy like at the yeah. end that just oh, oh, mega it is beautiful absolutely amazing good our oh, pleasure right coming up on today's podcast we're going to be talking loads to Tom about social media and his sort of TikTok following which has just absolutely blown up in the last couple of years and how he started in the industry we're going to talk about Great British Menu we've got our table talk question that we're doing this series we've got Boiling Point Cooking Hacks Myths all the usual stuff but first before we get into that this is a nightcap and for series 5 We are teaming up with Ridgeview award-winning English Sparkling Wine and Table Talk Foundation. More on them later on. But first, we're going to be opening up a lovely bottle every single week. This week, Paul, what do we have? So we've got Ridgeview's Cavendish, uh, which is absolutely stunning. It's one of their real classic flavours. So classic champagne grapes, Pinot Meunier, Pinot Noir Chardonnay. The ratio of it, I think that it's more Pinot Noir, more Pinot Meunier, and then a little bit less on the Chardonnay. But yeah, just just smelling it straight away, like red fruits. Doesn't smell like it looks to me. No, it doesn't. But it's really fresh tasting, nice sort of lemon acidity, fine bubbles. It's it's, it's delicious. Really big fan of that. It's won some big awards as well. I was uh, looking into it earlier. So it was, um, it won best in UK, UK VA wine of the year, 2002, 2008, 2009. Wow. And Consistent then, as well then. Yeah, and Decanter World Wine Awards, 2009, mm. uh, I think it was, uh, 2011. I may have got those dates wrong, but they got silver, World Wine Awards. Fuck a lot of awards, but yeah. <laughs> But no, it's a Bear stunning drop, drop. really <laughs> elegant, fresh. Oh, it's beautiful, yeah. honestly. I love it's that. delicious, yeah, that. It's delicious. Really, really good. So are you the sort of guy, Tom, that you know, you taste a new wine, you really like it, you're straight away thinking about food and what it goes with, or do you just happily enjoy what it is? <laughs> well, I'll, t- I'll take you for what it is right now. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, uh, the cog starts to turn, but like, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's a really, really good wine, that. Yeah, yeah I'm very happy with that. Yeah, yeah, just nice biscuity as well, like a, almost like a champagne should be, but mm-hmm. it's just not too, you can tell it's... I don't know how long it has been. You tell it's not been left on the leaves too long because it doesn't have that yeastiness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really fresh, acidic, lovely. Absolutely great way to start this podcast. Let's get into it, shall we? Um, first of all, I'd, I'd like to say I am 
honoured to be in the presence of two <laughs> social media influencer of the year awards winners at the South Canteen Awards. Yeah, Tom um, before yeah. me was it a couple of years yeah. before me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. not the year, not last year, the year before. Yeah, so uh, decorated company. Oh, this is yeah. decorated company. Yeah. Yeah. Mugs up there. Two gold mug. I mean, <laughs> yeah. gold mug sandwich. Right. Should, now. should have brought mine. <laughs> <laughs> we could have tracked this yeah. out of there. <laughs> exactly. I did on the day. I was wrecked. Um, no, but seriously, I mean, social media, man. This, I guess, it must have changed the game for you. We can d- dive straight into it, but you know, where did it start? The sort of the style, you know, just, or I'm going to put my content online. Was it scary? Did it did it transform as you went forward? Because it really sort of like it put you on the map in a big way. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I owe my sort of career thus far to social media, really, because mm. no one would know who the fuck I was <laughs> <laughs> if it wasn't well, for that. Like, that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, exactly that. Yeah. I mean, like, I I am um, sort of so inexperienced compared to many others in this industry and that was really my platform to sort of get myself out there sort of jump start the career if you like mm. and, and and the business is built on it like it's it's so different to what the restaurant is but it is essentially uh, built on that the the foundations of what the Flintlock is and what it what it's become is from that mm. because no one would have ever heard of us so mm. So yeah, we'll, we'll get on to like yeah the comparisons between your social content and the Flintlock. But um, when you say, so when you say you don't think you're as experienced as the rest, what was your training like? What was your sort of foundation in, in food like? Take us back to that point. <laughs> so I mean, it feels like a, like many 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 years ago because I, I guess it was. But like, so I was fresh out of six four. Um, went to work for a family restaurant which was owned by my brother um, at the time and it was like a Latin American thing which is I was going to say that's a bit random yeah that is random why, <laughs> yeah. why was your brother I, I, who I knows know. Latin can. American in Stoke that, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's that natural Genius. sort of yeah, natural yeah. sort of synergy of like, Stoke on Trent was it like Cuban sandwiches and stuff like <laughs> not no. quite it was it was like um, I don't know why he did it but like I can sort of see the Appeal because like no one had done that before, but yeah, yeah, it was like fajitas, enchiladas, all that kind of stuff. Oh, but, right. Um, and was he good? Like, was your brother a good chef? Like, did he wasn't a chef, he, oh, right. st- he still to... isn't by his own admission. <laughs> 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 I taught him everything he knows, and I was 17 when I taught him, so, <laughs> 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 so, so but he was in the kitchen, was he? He did work in the kitchen with me, yeah, so. Wow. so like, we he set that up, and I sort of joined after to sex form to sort of do it and quickly found out that like working in a kitchen was what I wanted to do so we took it forward and it um yeah, I'd, I've described it on a number of podcasts before as not real food because it wasn't in a lot of ways but um like it was a great experience for me because I was just thrown in at the deep end so I had to sort of work it out as I went mm-hmm. and um yeah, it, it it was what it was. It didn't teach me a lot about food, but it taught me a lot about what it was like to be yeah, in a kitchen. Environment. I guess. Yeah, yeah, well, that's yeah. Cool. yeah. So what was this? So that that happened. The Latin American restaurant happened. What was the next step? Like, where did it go? So I did that until I was oh, like 22, 23 and just realised it wasn't for me because I think inwardly I knew that I was a chef, but that wasn't really the that wasn't what the restaurant yeah, was. Yeah, it wasn't being represented yeah, in the restaurant. Exa- exactly yeah, exactly yeah, that, yeah. you know, your pre-bought fudge cakes and spice mixes yeah, from you're pretty, Schwartz. You're not That's, proud of it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> it's not me. I decided it wasn't for me and I needed to get away from it because it was just sort of all the, all the worst things about hospitality mm-hmm. without all the good things. So, like, mm-hmm. I needed to get away from it. So I, I left... Um, and then went to work doing something completely different for like 10 years basically it was then within another family business which is agricultural engineering and oh, I absolutely wow. fucking loved it Did like you? yeah so absolutely you loved it agricultural engineering so what you're out in fields farming doing stuff and what are you doing <laughs> no I definitely wouldn't Fixing say I was farming I was, I was like we, we, we make and sell like 
gates and cattle feeders, sheep feeders, and stuff. Oh, like okay, that. So, got you. Yeah, yeah. so I was going out to oh. to um, the suppliers of those two farmers, and then going on to farms and and um, measuring up for people who, who wanted like new setups and stuff like that. Oh, so different than so, yeah, yeah, just outside, just meeting people. Just, yeah, yeah it was it. really good. Like I enjoyed it a lot, and took me like across everywhere in the UK and and to Europe and. And it was really, really good, but it was ten never years, really. Right. Yeah, 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 ten years. Was it like? I mean, I don't think I've ever asked you. Like, if you didn't, if you weren't a chef or you took a break for a bit, what would you? What would you do? Fuck no, it's homeless. <laughs> I don't know. I, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know. I've never really been into anything. Like that. I wanted to do this since I was 10, so yeah, it didn't work out. Yeah, who knows? I'm not very good at anything else. No, but I mean, that's the thing. It's, it's funny because, like, look, they always ask footballers, don't they? Yeah. The like, best one was Crouch. Crouch yeah. What <laughs> would you be? A virgin. <laughs> <laughs> I would never get old. That, no. that's that's so good. Good. that joke pretty much made his after career, didn't it? Yeah, I think yeah. it did. That, like, yeah. it was like someone saw that joke and went, we'll make, we should make a podcast on this guy. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so what? So 10 years, and then I guess maybe based on the social content I don't know in the evenings and stuff were you still like cooking and loving it it was like a passion project yeah it, it, it always seemed to be a thing so like if there was like if we had friends around for dinner or whatever not that I've got many friends but like I was just like <laughs> 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 I'll fucking cook I'll show you what I can do and like it, it it always was there and then I started posting on socials because I had nothing to do really because I was working away from where I lived which was in North Yorkshire and um, I had nothing to do in the week so I'd, I'd travel down on a Monday go do my job and then sort of through the week I'd have nothing to entertain myself in the evening so I was like right well I'll cook and I'll take photos at, at wow. the time yeah. and that that went well got a bit of traction and that eventually was that just on Instagram yeah that was, that was Instagram yeah um, I started doing it on Facebook realised that Facebook was a bit shit at the time so I was like wait Instagram is Facebook still a thing people still use Facebook Facebook's coming around now really? yeah yeah it's coming shit. back around but it's the it's Instagram around. thing yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. It's, the, it's, it's, it's the link I guess between the two but uh, yeah so Instagram was where I started posting the photos got some traction from that and then eventually that turned into videos and that's when it got like really serious when I started posting yeah. videos regularly it's amazing because you you even talk about it then and it's sort of your style and vibe anyway but you make it sound so simple mm. yeah. took some photos that went well took some video content that went well 85 yeah. million followers later <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just like so organic isn't it just so simple yeah. like don't overthink it uh, yeah. when did it really like peak was it sort of was lockdown there a time yeah. we doing- there's been like a few peaks like when the first year of Instagram I got to 10,000 within a year which was like mega I was like really really pleased we had a balloon and everything it was yeah. mega yeah. and then I was like oh, yeah this is really good and then um, when it went into video it started to go again and then it was I think it was March this year which was just after GBM and the two things weren't linked it was just like sort of the um, the peak of the wave that went on it went mental so we went from 200,000 on Instagram to like 600,000 in like three or four months and in, and TikTok went from like 200,000 to one and a half million in like no time and then it just kept Madness. going and going and going that's and it was so how many got now on TikTok? two and a half million on TikTok oh, fuck that's my <laughs> I think I was seven <laughs> I've really, never really posted anything. No. I, I mean, just classic watch everything. Yeah, yeah. nothing yeah. on one of those. Yeah. I'll basically next. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just peeping over the fence. Just, yeah, duck my head down if anyone knows. Re- I'm there. really rogue for you, Paige. Like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah was there other than the stuff externally was there any like one video or one was there like a viral moment is it basically what I'm saying is there... I think it's when I sort of picked up on the fact that like if you give people a reason to come back you'll, you'll gain more followers so, oh, like, so that's why it's the series series or yeah, yeah. <laughs> the series are important but it's information that yeah. if you give over information people will come back yeah. it's as simple as that like if you post a recipe that's the information people will come back yeah, yeah. Like, so. and the, the one thing I was saying to Cy before on this one thing that's always struck me about yours is 
the, f- the first you know couple of seconds that draws people in the food always looks really tasty and well executed and it's just straight away pulls people in and a new soft accent comes in and, <laughs> yeah. and then yeah. it's like a very simple tutorial yeah it's never you're never complicating it no nope. it's always shot nicely but very simply not yeah. overproduced I hate those ones where they're just one second cuts and yeah you're like fucking hell I'm gonna have a look do you know what I mean it's just it's really nice easy to follow if you're not a chef but Mm -hmm. that instant one it's like whatever it is it's like oh that looks tasty yeah that's well cooked yeah Yeah. because we know there are a lot on there that can't fucking cook so many the vast majority can't can yeah. they? No, you're right. Some it's of them have official. a pretty big following. Yeah. 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 It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy <laughs> that I suppose that no, you know, loads of people don't notice the difference as well. But yeah. No, it's absolutely amazing. I think, I mean, also considering how little, I guess, training you've had as well, like, you can tell when you watch those videos, like, there's just that chef, because I know with, like, him, you know, he, Paul often talks about, like, it's chef's food. Do you know that <laughs> sort of thing? You always refer to that phrase, like, chef food. It's like, yeah. And you have that sort of crossover of its home cooked food, but it's also got that chef like, fucking chef would love to chow down on this. Yeah, do you know yeah, what I mean yeah. by that? That's, That's it. it. Yeah, yeah. It all looks it's comforting, unctuous, tasty. Yeah. It's not just it's never style over substance. Yeah. That's never. It. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's so important. Like you you've got to um when I talk about information and stuff like that's really really important that like it looks great but it also delivers so if someone makes it at home following what you're telling them to make yeah. it's got to be the same yeah. you, even if it doesn't look exactly right it still tastes mega because yeah. you've, you've you've got the, that sort of background because yeah, a lot of it. some of the guys out there and they end up producing like lovely stuff sometimes it's so like quick shot yeah. Like, people can't follow it I'd know what to do you'd know what to do yeah, yeah. from it but somebody watch at home like I don't know what they've done what's that yeah yeah fucking hell that's what I've got thank God yeah do, do, do you know what I mean so yeah I think yeah you definitely deliver for especially for the home cook like mm-hmm. that yeah oh, mate yeah 100% I've got so many questions on this honestly because I've never really sort of like known how this stuff is all done but there must be so much effort and energy that goes on behind the scenes just in terms of the consistency mm-hmm. like we were saying before when we were on the look like the height of the camera the lighting like most of it all looks the same like you can't just get lucky with that stuff like you must have to get to when you get that following you know what works yeah 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 yeah. there there is there is definitely like a method behind the madness like there's there's like i record it all on my phone which i've got here really Um, all on literally just all on this phone on Uh. on like little tripod same size as this that the microphone's on outside my restaurant because like i want to produce it all i i think um what's different um with what i do versus a lot of other people who make food video is that they have crews and they have like mm. I, I have people who film me for other stuff but like that's usually like um, either long format like YouTube or but for like a brand deal specific where they would ask for professional filming yeah. but my sort of day to day my regular is just literally on an i Amazon tripod wow. with my iPhone outside the restaurant it has to be daylight because I can't afford lights yeah. so it's just <laughs> on like on one induction and yeah. like it, you, you'll notice that you never see anything go in an oven because like there's no oven outside so true yeah. so, I've noticed they're all outside yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and that's why just ah, because yeah. you do a lot of content considering you don't use an oven yeah, yeah. <laughs> fucking <laughs> lot of clever isn't it <laughs> <laughs> So how you, we've done a lot of you've done a lot of series now. You've done you're in the you've done the sources. Done sources. We're just redoing sources. sources second version. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we've had uh, all the sides. Sides. Yeah, yeah. Potatoes. That's one of my favourites. Potatoes. Yeah, we did. It does take a bit of time. The, the filming yeah. and editing. It does. Because well, yeah. because I don't the thing mine stops and starts. I'll get something to go big. Next ones will go shit. So I just don't have the time to invest. It, that into it do you know what I mean yeah, like yeah, yeah. I, I can do the a mine are quite natural like mm-hmm. yours in a sense because again I don't have the time or the expertise to make it all flashy <laughs> um, but I, yeah I don't I look at yours I think fucking how is he blasting out, out all these videos mm-hmm. do you do like say on one day you'll do five or six or whatever that's what I used to do yeah. like before I re- realised that I was going to go insane by yeah. doing that so like I've started to spread them out a bit more but that's what I used to do I used to spend every Monday at the restaurant I used to just go down there at like 6 in the morning do videos till like 10 at night and go home yeah. um, which was mental really yeah, yeah. because like it's not 
sustainable. Yeah. <laughs> anyone, yeah. anyone sense we're running a business in a restaurant. Yeah, and it's not your closed day, your day off. Isn't it? Yeah. 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 So, so that's what I used to do, and now I, I sort of do them when I have time. So, like, it's it, it's become more natural, and it's it's a more enjoyable experience because I don't do them because I have to. I just do them because I want to. So that that's makes yeah. more sense. Do any of the staff at the Flintlock get involved to help out, or, or is it? And, and does the food? Where does it go? Do because sometimes you make fuck loads of it. So is it staffed in that day? Like what's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's always given to someone. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. that was also part of the problem with doing it on a Monday. Like I was, <laughs> yeah. I was just like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like, yeah. I can't yeah. afford yeah. any more calories. <laughs> like, what's yeah. going on? <laughs> so um, <laughs> we did a. I did a, a long shoot one day and I had Amelia from the restaurant who's one of our wonderful staff and she came and sort of washed up a bit and uh, and she got to eat the food but usually it just goes to anyone who's there so wow. um, which is you know, a side benefit of making a video as people get to get to eat it as well do you have a favourite was there like a favourite like moment or, or, or one of the series or one of the sources is there like a sort of particular favourite you always look back on is I, it I really, I, the sources is really good because it's yeah. like you can integrate more chefy stuff within it yeah, like yeah, yeah. if you do uh, like I tend to find typically that if you do something that's too complicated, people don't like it because it's it's naturally too complicated. Yeah, switch off. Yeah. 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 So I think there's there's little ones that you find within something that looks quite basic and attractive that's got a few tips in there that like are really really good so yeah. like um, I don't know it's hard to pick one out really because there's so many yeah. but <laughs> <laughs> there is there is so much content Ooh, I think right. it, it, there was some like um, double fried um, potatoes and ghee which were really really good because they were like baked and then you and you fried them in the ghee which had got garlic within the ghee and I think like it was just like the kind of thing that someone wouldn't naturally think of mm-hmm. perhaps yeah. and I think that that was a really good one for me and it nice. did well so yeah, yeah, yeah. I think one of the sides you did which you've said somewhere that you, one of your guilty pleasures is wings I think you had wings as one of your sides mm. that's that, that one of your like all time oh, yeah. wings are the best aren't oh, they yeah. It's got to be one of the best. What's, like, your, what's your source of choice for wings? What's the ideal like, wing just, scenario? Just, your wing just scenario. I fucking love buffalo. Like, it's I can't, the one. I just can't it's get away one. from it. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. When you say the word, well, it's not like a That fruitiness you get. It's, yeah. I, mean, I was, I was <laughs> lucky enough to go skiing in Canada <laughs> with uh, my brother for his stag do. And it was the first time I went and had like buffalo wings like proper. Mm. So... And mm. I was just like, "What the fuck, man? This is blowing my mind." Yeah, and yeah. like, I was tired because I'd done a bit of skiing and drank <laughs> loads of beer. <laughs> <laughs> done the week long training induction course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, buffalo. Like, it, what it's is just it about the best. Buffalo? Like, what is it? It's, it's buttery, it's spicy, and it's tart. Yeah, yeah. And fruity. It's just hitting all of those. Yeah. It needs something creamy with it. I know most people go blue cheese. Obviously, I don't. No, know. You yeah, don't a bit know. of ranch. Yeah, you're weird. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. No, I, I think it's great. I don't think you've said it's a guilty pleasure, but what? Just because you can't help yourself with them, but, and they are really yeah. those, aren't they? Yeah. yeah, I yeah. mean, you, you wouldn't want to do a bucket every day, but like a, a bucket once a week. <laughs> <laughs> it's also because there's that element of like shame about like if you accidentally saw yourself in the mirror, do, do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, like it's yeah. on your face and your hands, and you look at yeah. yourself. Oh, it's not it's like looking first date food. No, 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 it's not. No, exactly. you couldn't post that online. So I want to be like, why is he not wearing gloves? <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> That's why I'm not wearing gloves. Um, <laughs> we've, 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 we've spoken quite a bit on our weekly pods about. Um, reactions you've had on TikTok when you've done the odd recipe because obviously your channel's not all about recipes at all it's loads of stuff yeah you, the odd time you've done like how to cook rice properly and stuff like that <laughs> yes. you, why are you laughing why are you, <laughs> you, uh, we were spoke about that sort of yeah. these, these cats up before yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah the comments can be brutal and yeah. awful and stuff and but. hold my hands up I I invite it as you yeah, yeah. You've left the door yeah. ajar. Yeah. And it's up to them if they want to walk in. I've just, I don't yeah. even put the bait in the water. I just dangle it. Yeah. And fuck, those piranhas keep coming. Yeah. Yeah. Come yeah. So yeah. then I'll just dip a bit more. Dip a bit more. Let's stay. <laughs> yeah, it's obviously engagement, doesn't it? Yeah. It's yeah. going to be there, use them. So, yeah. Um, yeah what, what, I mean, what's the worst kind of shit you've had? I've, you've I've had really baked in controversy in your... In your 
content, but there must still you must. Yeah, get I get it. Content. Yeah, I do get it. Like Any particular uh, ones that stick out. Of <laughs> some, some of my personal favourites. He, he sounds like he's had a stroke. <laughs> 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 It's so horrible. It's it's so so horrible. Me, eh? yeah. And this is this is a because I mean, you're, what I love is you're being so yourself, but you're so relaxed, and because you're yeah. quite softly spoken. Yeah. Like I would, I don't, are there any parody accounts of you out there? Because what I would love, no. I'd imagine, no, no, no. you would commentate on like I don't know, like a car chase the same way. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he's you know he's what he's done that. Yeah, yeah. He's taken a shortcut. He's it's, man, it's a car chase. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's <laughs> run over an old lady, and then you go right and run over the old lady. And uh, do you know what I mean? Like even horrific things, you would yeah. still deliver it in that manner. <laughs> it's, uh, it's I, like, I just uh, it's one of the things that like I really dislike about social media. It's like so one goes to record a voiceover or, or like a video or whatever and like instantly sound like they've just done a line of speed or something they're like <laughs> yeah. this is my recipe about whatever <laughs> and you're oh, like I mean just calm down just tell me what it is yeah. like yeah, can't mate. concentrate yeah, you're, you're a man after my own heart though because like my background is radio and I I never I think part of part of the reason why I had a, a limited amount of success on air was because I never wanted to be on air <laughs> and I think part of that I was sometimes the, the bosses would be like sorry you're too relaxed you're, you're, you're being too candid and, and you know it's, normal it's the morning radio you're <laughs> yeah. like, get up there yeah. son like, oh. I was like yeah but I'm not, that's not what I feel I don't feel like that so I'm not going to do it so I, I, I could sense that anyway without speaking mm. to you that there's an element of that in your content where it's like I am being so myself and I don't really care what anyone else thinks about that I'm just going to be really nice. yeah, yeah. So, yeah. But, but just... it won't stop the haters hating for something no, there's always well, there's, what, there's what, always what, what others have you had there apart from that <laughs> <laughs> stroke uh, when, <laughs> anything where I'm front facing someone pings me about my eyebrows because I've got no eyebrows <laughs> like, yeah, 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 yeah 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 I, 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 just, <laughs> <laughs> I have no ability to look surprised whatsoever <laughs> 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 that's so good so yeah like I get that <laughs> uh, it's just anything nice. like it, absolutely anything do you get like. much of, uh, scrutiny about the recipes or the foods like you yeah, like, wrong, like fuck off you know. but like unless it's like Paul Foster I'm not taking that seriously you know what I mean unless yeah. it's oh, someone who Foster. can do it better than I can then yeah. fuck you like <laughs> That's the thing, and it's never anyone who can do it better. No, like, no good chef is going. Tom, what you're playing? Like. Yeah, it's always some twat who can't cook. Yeah. And all they've done, they've seen another video. Someone does it different, so that's all they know. Yeah, so mm. they think that's the only way. Oh, he's done it different. He's wrong. Well, let's go at him. Yeah, you know. So no, I love all that shit. It's like, I used to years ago <laughs> take it personally, but now I'm like, it's fuck you, let's have it. Yeah. <laughs> let's have it. You come at me, I'll come back at you. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's fair. And then you can have a job, I'll have a job. And we're even, so I'll forget about yeah. it. Yeah. And have to come back. How oh, dare you? Oh, it's but mad. the, the funny, funniest ones lately, just dead simple. I've had a few women just yuck, that's disgusting. <laughs> that's it. So I just put, I thought the same when I saw your profile picture. <laughs> no. How dare you? You're reported. Why would you say that to me? Well, you thought it was fine to say. No, yeah. You could have been talking about me. I don't know. He's talking about the food. Like, 100%. Yeah, so like, have that. It's a bizarre world we live in where we can just say that to <laughs> strangers. <laughs> like, yeah, and it's the kind of thing weird. you'd never do that on the street, would you? Yeah, like, they would never. But I would never do that to them. I mean, no. never do it in reply because honestly, I'm chuckling. But <laughs> I turn that phone off and it's gone off. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. fucking doing something else. I'm too busy to fucking let this shit get to me. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> I guess the the only other thing that can stir up. Well, not controversy because it's not controversial, but like it feels like any time, for example, you know, a white British chef, mm -hmm. if you were to necessarily, you know, to in incorporate ingredients from around the world, yeah, sometimes yeah. you could get picked up on it as if like you're using it wrong. Yeah, which, yeah. You know, I mean, you're sure. a chef with a skill set. Ingredients know no bounds in terms Cultural of the. Cultural appropriation. Oh, doesn't exist. Oh, oh especially, yeah. especially yeah. ingredients and food. Yeah. I mean, it's one planet anyway, like, and you're an expert in your field. So. Yeah. Like, do, you, do you get much of that when you cook things outside of like a. You get, English menu, so to speak. you get the odd sort of thing like you didn't wash that chicken like I've never fucking washed a chicken <laughs> yeah, like, why, why the fuck am I washing a chicken yeah. like I mean if you want to do the it then, yeah, you, that's fine yeah. if you want to do it if you want to spray water on it and spray bacteria all over your kitchen yeah, yeah good point yeah, but that's why you shouldn't that's yeah. the reason 
You can put it. Why are you washing it in cold water? You can put it in a red hot oven. Yeah. Or pan. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Make any sense. Yeah. Cold water is not going to kill any bacteria on that. Chicken. Ridiculous. But I get. Yeah, I get a lot of that if I do something like roasted chicken. Yeah. It's something that's very big in Jamaica. And wash and wash and wash. Mm. And vinegar and wash and wash. Yeah. But you do it, does it affect? It doesn't do anything. It doesn't do much. Well, you can throw it in a fire anyway. Yeah, yeah what's the not point? Jerk it, it's like, that's corked jerk chicken. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Um, yeah. Can you give us a little taste of any upcoming series? What's the latest content bank? Yeah. You don't have to tell us if you don't. Want to. I think I'll, I'm sort of running out of gas in terms of like loads and loads of series I'll do, I'll do Source I think I'm going to do 20 more mm. um, I've done three of them so far or two of them yeah. and then I think I'll have a, a rethink for the new year I don't yeah. like I'll keep doing it because it is me it's part of me and, and, and what I do but um it's just a lot of work. So, like, of course, it's, yeah. you know, yeah. to commit to like fifty of, as I've yeah. done before, it's too many. So, Absolutely. like, but I, I want, I will keep going because that's part of what I am. And like, we have markers. Like, I'm creeping up to a million on Instagram. So, like, I keep joking that I'm going to retire when I get to that point. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, you're the cash cow. <laughs> Don't do it. Do you ever change the content between the two? Do you always upload everything to both? I used to swap and change a bit and now I'm, I'm probably more protective over Instagram because I feel that that's kind yeah, of my, so my, my, yeah, my platform um, TikTok I'm not that bothered about like yeah, I'll fair. literally upload anything on yeah. there so Within reason. <laughs> so, yeah, like obviously, you said it sort of put you on the map. It's growing. It's grown and is growing still. Is it easy to separate that and then the flintlock and that style and the you know and your ambition with that restaurant? Is it hard to keep those two things? In tandem, if that makes sense. It's, it's easy for me to separate it, I think, because it's it's almost like social media is almost like my release of, of the front lock. It's like my downtime, if you like, even mm. though it's a lot of work. Um, because like fun lock is super serious all the time and social media is yeah yeah yeah, yeah. social media is not serious Mm. um in terms of like don't judge me on these recipes that's i'm a chef there Mm -hmm. but i'm a chef to give you free stuff over here yeah of course so yeah for me it's hard it's not easy sorry it's not hard to separate the two Mm -hmm. whereas i think sometimes people turn up at the fun lock thinking that they're going to get like cauliflower oh, cheese sure. croquettes <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. but, but then I guess that's where um, the second iteration of what we're going to do it, it comes into play so like that prey which is the second half of the flintlock will be more towards our uh, my socials oh, so okay. like people can come and eat the social food nice. in a, in a, that makes in a sense yeah. do you ever yeah. get anyone moan that it didn't match their expectations so imagine they come and have a great Question. time with Finlock yeah. anyway, but today they have come like, I don't know, with completely different expectations because they've just seen the social media and not seen that it's different at Finlock. We, we used to get that. Yeah. Not not so much now. I think probably just over time because like certain like little things like when you, you book, you have to press tasting menu and things like that. Ah, okay, which so, is quite a big Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. Which was the born out of conversation we had yes. nearly a year That's ago. So. Spoke, yeah, yeah. Was, yeah. I, I actually weirdly remember that because I remember, do you know what? This is quite embarrassing, but I remember saying to you, I follow this guy, I fucking love his content, honestly. <laughs> and you went, oh, weirdly, I spoke to him the other day. And yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I remember you just randomly, yeah. ha- that just happened the same week. But yeah, so what, what if you don't mind me asking, what yeah, was that, a bit of a bite over? Pretty, it was pretty pretty early, 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 wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was. We, so we changed the taste menu only in November last year, so it would be mm. just over a year ago when we spoke. I just wanted advice and making that transition and, and you were... Um, gracious enough to give me a time to, to talk me through it and and we it, we never looked back really after that advice and yeah. and really it was all around like giving enough information to customer and making sure they know yeah, what you're going to do exactly. and all that stuff so yeah, yeah. there would always be a few slip through the net but it's all about that clear communication yeah yeah, and funnily enough, the table next to me downstairs is like, have you not got an a la carte menu? No way! Did they not? Three guys? Yeah. Did they? I mean, they didn't really, they didn't win, they yeah, just asked. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, oh, it's like a live boiling point. This yeah. is amazing. <laughs> we've, had, um, we've had people walk out before that before, yeah, because yeah. there's no other 
yeah yeah in the early days even though we'd done I think I must have told you at the time like we communicated everything because yeah, yeah. you know from everything from you know the menus on the front the menus on the website the confirmation email what they have to click to accept and what's on your website everything you know? give all that literature out there mm-hmm. but, um, yeah, you still get your wrong it's literally in there I never felt so amazed me I mean that shouldn't surprise me when people even put the wrong restaurant a different salt from somewhere around the country <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've, we've had that, that as well yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, there's, yeah. There's, yeah there's a flintlock in like South Devon somewhere oh, so like <laughs> you, you get it really yeah. wrong right <laughs> yeah. like, hi welcome it took five hours to get here. Oh, yeah. oh shit here we go so which way did they do it did they come to you expecting to go there or the other way around yeah, come to us expecting to be there. Oh, uh, like, oh. anyway. uh, no, they didn't <laughs> left. <laughs> is, what, is it a different model, the other one? Yeah, it's just, it's just a pub, like, yeah. just a random pub. Like. Every other salt or derivative of where people book, it's like really low spec. <laughs> so I, they never come here expecting to be there. It's always the other way around. Glasgow, North Yorkshire, <laughs> Norfolk... Um, there's another one. I can't believe there's that. Right there's, yeah, there's, there was one Cornwallish kind of way. Um, yeah, and they're all like the top main course is about fifteen quid. Mm. So they top out. Spending. Sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> they probably go out two of them and they'll spend what thirty quid ahead yeah. and get hit with a fifty-five pound head charge from me. <laughs> Merry Christmas from poor Boston. Jingle yeah. bells. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I didn't even spend that at the other restaurant. <laughs> yeah. Says so. so you're out for being a moron. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've told them before, which I don't like, it's don't consider it a fine, because that's what they say, it's a fine, or you find it's not fine. Mm. It's an idiot tax. You learn and grow. But the way I see that is, they're never coming back. One, no. because they, they, they were never going to come here. Two, um, they're upset. Mm. And three, I've got their money. Yeah. I mean, so, it's, no, wonder, right. no wonder they are fucking furious. It's like a triple threat of things that have got all just yeah. say, hey, fuck so, it. Yeah, free reign. They never come in, so let's go for it. Let's have it. Um, right, before we move on to a couple of our features, just wanted to quickly talk about uh, Great British Menu. Uh, obviously, that's come up naturally on this podcast loads, but for you, your personality, you know, how you grew your sort of following doing really authentic videos where you're not even the centre of the camera you know that struck us didn't it it's not you know a lot of chef videos they're in it and then mm. you know the face it a lot of it is you just showing the food mm-hmm. how did you feel being on set and in the environment of BBC and, and all that sort of stuff you know was it because obviously you know it's getting a huge yeah, yeah. but um, yeah, was it daunting I mean, or scaring you I mean I've watched it since day dark I've watched yeah, Ball so, on it so yeah, like yeah. it was yeah. it was it was it was mega like it was a dream come true for me like oh, to, nice. to, to be on there and like I think I, I'm fortunate because I don't suffer with nerves like that's not really a thing for me I believe uh, you uh, apart <laughs> I believe <laughs> apart you. from when I watch Liverpool randomly like I'm like an absolute wreck when I watch Liverpool but yeah. uh, <laughs> apart from that I, I don't bother with nerves and like having I mean, eight cameras in my face just didn't really bother me at all it was just it felt like me versus me throughout the whole thing and I think that was the biggest challenge about it all it was just like I need to understand that I can do this and I think after certainly after I got through to the judges I was just like you can fucking do it yeah. like, and and yeah, yeah. like it changed everything for me like completely yeah. changed everything okay. um, but I, I loved it absolutely loved it it just still holds so much clout I mean you still say how you'll still get people in grass fed or here say you know I watched you and that, yeah, that was 11 years ago fucking yeah it was yeah, yeah we filmed yeah. it was um 2012 we filmed it in 2011 but yeah it's 2012 yeah it was like in my 20s yeah, yeah. fresh faced and still people talk about it so like yeah, that it's yeah. so mad yeah it's so much better and I didn't I got to the Friday I didn't get past that and never went back on but it still was so much power yeah yeah, yeah. it was amazing like changed the game for me like yeah, made good. me realise like I was capable then yeah, it was good because Pete as well yeah I'm going to see Tom tomorrow oh yeah Great. So it's the first time I met you, weren't it? I mean, yeah. You went in, went out for drinks. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, which was mega for me. Like, it, I, I think um, people who, who are not in the industry perhaps like sort of take it for granted. They just assume that I am uh, what I am. But like for me, um, to sit and listen to you and Tom 
chat about like time at sats and all that stuff yeah. and mm. I'm just like what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> that's how I feel every week on this so like, what the fuck but, it's but, yeah. so yeah it's 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 amazing that like it's pushed me that like forward again so like yeah oh, that's, that's really cool to hear that's yeah. really awesome uh, okay let's do our Tabletop Foundation question as I mentioned at the top we are pairing up with Tabletop Foundation this year um Basically, they, I mean, they've got incredible values that really fit ours. So two main things, food education for children and supporting local hospitality communities. This week we're talking especially about food and cooking with your kids. Um, both Paul and Tom have kids. You have to cook for them. They are quite young. It's always challenging with new kids. This is a stat that is crazy to me, but the obesity crisis costs the NHS around £6.5 billion a year. It's the second biggest preventable cause of cancer. It's obesity. Yeah. And obviously, you know, a lot of that starts as a kid and yeah. your education in it and how families go about it. So, broad topic, but what is like the top tips you have for like getting your kids involved in, in cooking? So, I mean, what I'd say is like from you're a chef or you could be a chef or a cook or whatever, you make delicious food for you, your guests or whatever. There's no difference in doing that for kids. You mm. just you'd be considerate to like obviously don't put loads of salt in it (laughs) (laughs) you just have to think about that but like if you were making like I do it for Isabel all the time she's just gone for and like if I give her a carrot she's not likely to eat it but if I make a carrot delicious probably not cook it in chicken fat (laughs) (laughs) hey I don't know (laughs) just think about how you can make something delicious out of something healthy because that's perfect plausible of course. so mm. yeah it's just that extra time and effort to make sure you yeah, get applying getting more thought to it than just delicious getting out food. of a packet or whatever yeah, yeah. the most powerful thing I've found is like because my kids like, like most kids they have their beige stage which Ethan he's, he was seven recently he's still in that a bit you know it's bread it's potato it's pasta it's rice mm-hmm. it's anything beige and carby and doughy and, mm-hmm. and you know that's all he wants he's coming out of it now um but getting them involved in the kitchen, they're so much more likely yeah, yeah, to yeah. eat if they prepared it, even if it's veg that mm. they never have. It's funny and, that. But the thing is, you can't you can't force them. You've got to try and create the environment in the kitchen where they want to come in. Yeah, and for sure. Get get involved. So Esme has been helping me for ages. Last night I showed her how to fry an egg properly. Mm. She loved it. A little egg on toast. There's a little snack, and like she, like she loved it because yeah. I was just teaching a little bit without going into it, like the science of yeah, yeah. It in the yolk and why it's important and low temperature and stuff. Um, but it's only what a few months ago, Ethan just come in to me when I was making dinner, like, Can I help or something? Yes, <laughs> you can. If I'd have been talent, come and you're making dinner with me. It's because Feels of like the a job. Feels yeah. Like yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, he'd come in and he was, you know, prepping veg with me and putting things in the pan, and um, he, he was asking all these like, crazy questions. And like the things he had prepared, he was eating, and just because mm-hmm. he had done it and took an interest in it, and he was like proud of what he had done. Yeah, so so much, so powerful. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing that, isn't it? It's like being part of the process. It's like they're invested in it, mm-hmm. in that yeah. journey of that food. So they want to be a part of it at the end. Yeah, because yeah. I've always been, and I've said it to you before, how how important it is for them to understand where the food comes from. Because there's one thing we've really struggled with in this country. Um, I remember watching shows years ago and it was a Jamie Oliver show and he was in his Italian school and he's got like a globe art show and, and you know all these other veg yeah. and they all know what it is and most kids over here don't mm. um, so mm. it's about understanding it not just forcing them making them eat it or yeah. some you know, overcooked shit veg on a plate mm. but understanding where it's come from yeah. so like my two with with me I believe that like they, they can be veggie vegan meat is whatever they want when they grow up you give them all the information to make an informed decision. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, like, you know, the old, like, beef doesn't link to a cow, does it? Mm. You know? Sure, yeah. On a supermarket shelf. Does, yeah. Chicken does, you know, pork doesn't link to a pig. It, they're two completely different names. Yeah, and then true. you see it on the supermarket. So, I've always thought it's really important from a really early age that they know that that piece of beef is a cow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they don't get that shock at four or five oh, she's old. I've been fuck. eating cow. I'm eating that. And then, uh-huh. you know, they're shocked and upset. Do you know what? I've so never always known. I've never thought about that until you said that. Yeah. Because yeah. you, you're right. It's such a simple thing, but just even the terminology, you're distanced from exactly. the thing, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. And you exactly. just got to let them know because they're, you know, they, when they're really young, they're like sponges and they're, you know, they're, they don't they don't care. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
they don't have that sort of social justice warrior in them, do they? So, <laughs> you're right. You know, well, it's, they, it's an opportunity, it's right, to, to get that information in while they, they can accept it or, or absorb it. It's like, authentic yeah, way. Yeah. Yeah. And then they can make a proper informed decision yeah. when they're older mm-hmm. and, yeah. and do, do what they want. I think, you know, I remember having a conversation with um, their nan, so their mum's mum, years ago, because the next door neighbours had had uh, chickens and we had chicken for dinner that night and she was taking Esme round to go oh, and oh, oh, shit good save uh, <laughs> if you drop that it's nice that fizz <laughs> um, taking them round to go and get some eggs and she was like oh the hens the hens and she like, can't call them chickens I was like no no they're chickens yeah like she's having chickens and I was like no they're chickens yeah. so not worry about it she won't bat an eyelid yeah and then, you've said that from day one yeah she yeah. knows that we're eating not them but yeah. the ones of them mm-hmm. and it's never been an issue. Yeah. I mean, I've shown you videos of Esme walking around here with whole dogs all in their feather, like not even gutted. <laughs> <laughs> like a teddy. So <laughs> <laughs> I'd say. No, can I take it to school? No, you can't take <laughs> yeah. it to school. Yeah, it's <laughs> that's, probably not the best. That's, yeah. side, that's like, it's just you give them the facts. Yeah, the yeah. children. Straight up. And they'll learn and they can make the right sort of decisions. They'll understand where things are from. Yeah, mm. that's great. Right? Yeah. yeah. I probably I probably won't bring that up next week. Isabel's a cow in the nativity place. <laughs> <laughs> Just wait. Is wait. Be? No, 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 it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Next week, oh, yeah. we'll yeah. make you a burger. No, no. What is this one of her? How old? How old you she's four. Okay, so, so she, first nativity. First nativity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh mate. Uh, and our proud times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you remember yours? Your yeah, and we had the last one. This one because she'll be seeing the school next year. Yeah. So, um, is it inevitably like a proud moment, or is that cliche when you see like you know? Every yeah, it's nice, but sometimes yeah. they're just like it's chaos. Yeah. Yeah. Or they just stood there looking the other way. Like, <laughs> I couldn't be, I couldn't be less of shit. Like, <laughs> waving at you like, don't wave. <laughs> <laughs> you're a star <laughs> that's great uh, right Table Talk Foundation if you want to find out more about them as an organisation how you can get involved there's loads of incredible events and stuff that they do so jump online and just type them in and figure it out right let's move on to Boiling Point my favourite feature Boiling Point stories where our chefs tell of the real heat of the kitchen when have you lost your shit on someone or when have they lost their shit on you who wants to go first I can go if you want me to. Oh, yeah, go on then, yeah. I've got it. Uh, we're three for three. Yeah, we are. On people going first. That it used to always be like, people would... Like, you go, you go. <laughs> you judge mine. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm like, oh, God, fucking, <laughs> mine's nothing to the one to ask them. Yeah. So I've got, I've got notes on this, so oh, I don't, okay, I don't, right, I don't, right. I don't, oh. I don't forget it. Excellent. So like, this, it wasn't me, I was the victim, if you like. Oh, okay, interesting. <laughs> and it was way back when I was at college. So like, <clears throat> the, I'm pretty calm. Like I don't, I don't really lose my shit in the kitchen. It's been the odd time, which would you know for good reason. So like, sure. <laughs> as it always is. But this it stands out for me because it was so fucking ridiculous. But like, I can remember it like it was yesterday. I was 17. So <clears throat> I was at Buxton College, mm-hmm. and I was on the pastry that day. And we got a dinner on that evening. And um, I knew what I got to do. So, like, I got in nice and early, cracked on with it. I, I made my shoe buns and my caramel. And we got a new lecturer, this guy called Rob, <laughs> who he'd, he'd cooked for the Queen once. And he wanted fucking everyone to know it. Like, <laughs> he literally, it was literally years, yeah. the first words out of his mouth <laughs> every time there was a new student yeah. or whatever. I cooked That's for the Queen, yeah. 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 Um, and he was like proper old school he used to say at the start of every lecture or lesson or whatever like he refused to call anyone chef until they'd earned his respect wow. that, that kind that, of that guy that generation <laughs> and um, <clears throat> so I anyway I'd, I'd done my stuff like I'd, I'd done my shoe I'd done my caramel and, and it was and Christmas happy with it? yeah I was happy like yeah. I was I was I was pretty pleased and it was Christmas and we fucked off to the pub for lunch like and Great. <laughs> you know standard in college yeah. mm-hmm. and um, so I'd had a couple of beers or whatever and I came back and we were getting set up for service and Rob Chef Rob 
came into the, the kitchen as was and he lost his fucking mind. He was going ape shit about something and like everyone was like, what the fuck? What, what? <laughs> we don't know what's going on. And <clears throat> and he decided that like it was me because he didn't really like me for whatever reason so he, he didn't call me chef. So he, he, he pinned me out and he made me stand on this like sort of bit one stage. It was like just like a little... It was like fucking... Like a big step. Whatever it was. <clears throat> and fucking bothered me in front of it. Like, properly, you know, when someone's lost the mind, red mist, like, you have fucked up this sponge. You have fucked up this sponge, this Genoese, I think it was, he was making a gat or whatever. And he was like, you have completely ruined this dinner. <clears throat> to the point where I was like, I don't know what to do here. And he is screaming like ear in my face. And then he stands away from me and he's like, so what have you got to say to everybody? I was like, Rob, hate to break it to you, but I made that crock on Bush area. <laughs> Sponges aren't mine. Oh, <laughs> <Chef>. Yes, <laughs> yes, Rob. Oh, little chef. <laughs> So yeah, it was. It was. Oh. I just took it because I didn't know what to do. But then I realised what was going on because I could like my oh, mind man. refocused after being at the pub for a couple of hours. <laughs> Saw the croc on Bush over there. I thought I made that. He's barking me for someone else's fucking Fuck. mistakes. Oh, that's so, a, what yeah. a moment to feel. Yeah, like. yeah. What yeah. was his reaction back? He just like he didn't know what to do with himself, oh, and mate, everyone was like it. pissing themselves and like yeah. <laughs> that's so, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. That's what stuff. That's what dreams are yeah. made of. Like. Yeah. Turn around. So someone with the ego. He was yeah, a ego. fucking wanker. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. So satisfying. Yeah, yeah. really. Add him. That's great. Chef That's Rob. Great. Is his actual name Chef Rob? I don't know what his real name is, oh, but he's. I mean, Rob. He's definitely Rob. Rob. Yeah, I, yeah. Love that, I love that you've not shooting. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we know it's Rob. We know the area. But, <laughs> did, you, did you find the sponge culprit? Uh, yeah. I, I, I don't know. Who it was. It must have been oh. someone who. They either back backed off when they saw me taking the bollocking or yeah, but yeah. like can't have been that many other people, can it? So that's yeah. great. That's great. Well done. Yeah. Good story. Yeah. Great story. Yeah. Good, nice pile of <laughs> nice pile of and caramel. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Chef Rob. If anyone was close enough for you to just take a big bite out, <laughs> yeah, big tree finger mats yeah. in there. <laughs> <laughs> nice one, mate. Right, Paul, what you got for us, mate? Um, so this was when I was about twenty. 223 or sous chef in this uh, little restaurant in Coventry like fucking pony restaurant it was we did some nice food but honestly the place was just the wild west it was just it was awful it was Coventry <laughs> Coventry doesn't deserve a great restaurant like, let's be honest um, yes anyway we did, we did some nice food me and the chef there and I was going on the next year I was I was, I was leaving um, the next year to go and do all my stages in New York and California and that and um, so I bought myself some nice new knives and some lovely fucking Japanese knives and this Swanye fucking like sort of veg slash fillet and knife it was like about 250 quid oh. loved it and I was like I was saving them oh, I'm going to use them it was only a few of us in the kitchen I was going to touch them and this knife was gone Gone and I needed it. I yeah, had something, something to fill it. Um, anyway, I've gone, gone around, looked, looked around. The pot washer's not there, and he stood in the corridor. It's really sort of sheepish. His pot washer, me and him were made. We got on really well. Yeah. Um, and then he picked up the knife, and and I'm talking like a good inch is snapped off the end of it. You can't, you know, if you chip the end, <laughs> yeah. you can, oh, yeah. it back. This was done. This was done, and I fucking hit the roof. It was like. We spent 200, and I made him go to the cash point and get 250 quid. <laughs> <laughs> of course you did. Yeah. Of course you fucking did. Because I was just like, are you fucking serious? Like, oh my God. I, I missed a bit. So it wasn't like he just dropped it or anything. That'd be a bit different. Because well, what the fuck have you done? Mm. And there was, um, the manager had asked him to like, the banister on the stairs downstairs had asked to screw it up. So he was, he just picked my knife up and he was screwing it with that. Oh and mate, just, <laughs> oh fuck. Fuck, fuck, fuck that. And I was it's good, because of that, I was fucking lost it, 250 quid. Like, I just saw red and it was just oh, nothing, enough. nothing. Couldn't give a fuck who you were, <laughs> you're paying. He's gone and he's come and I've calmed down a bit then. He's come and it's 250 quid. I'm like, great, thank you. So I've got the money and obviously I was gonna buy a new knife. 
was like, you can keep that fucker, I don't need it now. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like moping around and stuff, and then he's spoken to like someone else, and this waitress come up to me, and she got a bit brave, um, and had go at me for making him get the money out. Yeah. And I think because I liked him, and I understood his situation, I did, I internally, even though at that age I wasn't emotionally mature, I didn't ever know what I was thinking. Yeah. I was clearly feeling a little bit of guilt. Yeah, and sure. she uh, fronted me on it. Wow. So obviously I was feeling guilt anyway. She pointed out, so I just fucking lost it. Really? She was like, you know, he's over here from Malawi with his wife. She's just had a baby. They've got no money. She's not working. Oh um, my you know, God. He only owns this as a pot washer. How dare you? God, your guilt must have piled So yeah, up. obviously I didn't know what it was at the time. I just fucking lost it. I was like, fuck yourself. Get out of here. Who do you think you are? <laughs> like, have you seen this fucking knot? Like, all in front I don't care about that family. Have you seen this knot? <laughs> yeah. It's like, he's a fucking man. He's got to pay. He snapped it. And then she's like, oh, you're disgusting and all this. And I'm just, anyway, get the fuck out of the kitchen. Piss off. Wow. Um, and again, I was just, I did, there was this, the feeling of guilt that I, I couldn't really recognise at yeah, the time sure. yeah, like, you knew it was there you just didn't have to handle it, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there, then I'm still like you know, I'm right he broke it he's got to pay for it yeah. like, he that is such a, broke it he didn't just drop it that is such a grey area isn't <laughs> it yeah <laughs> because it's like it's your thing yeah it's he was right well wait a minute where did he pick it up from my bench it was on your bench. It was on my bench. Bad, bad, bad. My knives were never dive around the kit. Oh, so he wasn't yeah. washing it up. No, so no, you know, these were not These are a new kit. Like, I, wasn't, yeah. I wasn't putting them in the pot wash. That, that is bad. Yeah. 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 So, but there was still this, like, like now, even now, bringing this up, I'm like, I know I was, I feel I still did the right thing, but I still feel guilty. Yeah. He's yeah. a lovely guy, and yeah, just had a kid okay, and had no money. And, oh. Here's the question. If you'd have given him the chance to offer to pay, would he have taken it? I don't know. Because I, I know, think probably because you in your mind, I think part of your guilt is the fact that you put him in a corner. Yeah, probably. Yeah. So, yeah. so he never got the chance to say, "I'm fucking sorry, I'll pay for it." Yeah. Did he? Yeah, yeah. So I guess that could be could why be you feel guilty. Mm. I don't know. Yeah, but I. Oh, I mean, you're right. he's right to have to do something because that is a fucking yeah. 250 quid. But that, that, that was two, the end of 2006, start of 2007. Oh, yeah, time. so the value so actually of that. Yeah, is, 250. Yeah, yeah. three times that now. You, you just had a baby and you got no money. Clean him out for the money. <laughs> but he still. I bet he didn't do it again. He still came out for my living there. Can't have been that bad really then, can't Can't have been that bad. Was he then. really fucking happy at yeah. the <laughs> Wow. That yeah. is great. Mate, how, how you keep still digging these out, I have no idea. Yeah. So no, that, that come to me randomly last week when I was driving in, and then I was like, oh, why did I work there? And then it was like, then I backtracked and the story from last week come off that. That's so amazing. Two from that I'd forgotten about. Yeah. Yeah. You're, a, you're a treasure trove. <laughs> <laughs> you're a fucking tre- treasure trove. Yeah, it's a nice way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fair play. Fair play. I love the honesty. It's cathartic to share this stuff now. It is. Do you yeah. know what I mean? This is, yeah. this is cooking, cooking <laughs> therapy, right? Uh, okay, right. Let's move on to any cooking hacks, myths or cowboy stories. So any like hacks and... Like Hacks, like, I mean, like, everything's it's been, been done. done. We like, had this conversation earlier, didn't we? Yeah. Right. We feel like we like struggle for them now. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But do you find, especially you see this on TikTok and Instagram, cooking hat, now it's a recipe. Yeah, yeah. No, no, that's just a thing. Yeah, it's just, just a, just a thing. Like, yeah. A hack is like, oh, that saves me a lot of time. Yeah. yeah. And, and, something and, I always do. and it doesn't cut yeah. the corner. Yeah. yeah. Or, do oh, it. That, that, that saves me washing up. There was one the other week in our in our kitchen actually. Just I was just um, chopping celery for for whatever reason. I was just pressing it down and and then like just uh, brunoise or whatever. And one of the chefs was like, I've never seen anyone press celery. That's like almost, a hack. Almost like, it and break it. Yeah, break it's like it's, 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 it's not a hack. <laughs> That's just how you cut fucking celery. Bro. <laughs> 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 to be honest, if I'm deadly honest, I didn't. I haven't thought of that. But I'm not a chef. Yeah. But I haven't thought about the, just flatten the flatten surface. It. Well, it makes sense. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah, it does make sense. But yeah. yeah, fair enough. I think we should ditch hacks. They've all been done. Yeah, we've we've had some good ones, but yeah, I feel like if I'm looking for one now, I'm done scraping the barrel. That's if any of them come to me, yeah. I'll, I'll bring them out. Yeah. But 
what we do have a lot of is cowboy stories. Yes. A lot of cowboys. So they are like a reverse hack, really. They think they're a hack, but they're actually clever. Yeah. They're actually dirty as fuck, and they're. Yeah. I remember some guy, I think oh, on, he's, he's yeah. passed away now, unfortunately, but I remember when I worked in the, the Latin American restaurant, a guy <laughs> called John from Romania. What was it called? Uh, Castro's. 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 Yeah. Oh, okay. Interesting. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> glorified war criminal. Anyway, um, he, uh, yeah, this guy called John, really, really nice fella. He bought me. A, I'm sure he bought me a bottle of wine with like a Transylvania thing on. Um, he, I saw him get some seafood out of a freezer, which tells you everything you need to know about mm-hmm. Castro's, really. Mm-hmm. But and he tried to, he wanted to defrost it in the microwave. I was like, whoa, whoa, what the <laughs> fuck, John? <laughs> Step away from the muscles, John. <laughs> yeah, that wow, was that, that was is... pretty bad. I remember it like it was yesterday. It's just like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> that is bad. That yeah. is bad. Yeah. I've seen years ago. I can't cannot remember where this was. I can just see. It. you know a place where they get big bags of frozen prawns and shit in you know you can just the best way you just lay them out on the tray if you're going to do it just let them defrost that's it <laughs> you know cold water it just what you're doing it just takes a lot of flavour away and it's yeah, like, they yeah. just go they grow grainy I, I remember just seeing warm not red hot but warm water like what so you like plunge it above tepid uh, just running over it oh, uh, that's grim what the no, fuck are you uh, doing <laughs> nah 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 <no. laughs> kilos of it just ticking away oh god <laughs> I hate it Dang. we actually we got a message as well from who is it from Jack who messaged us saying hi Paul and Cy big lover of the pod I once saw a chef put dirty potatoes in the dishwasher as he needed to clean them before making mashed potato. <laughs> Bearing in mind, this was a 2AA Rosette restaurant. I was disappointed because they didn't clean it before cleaning crockery. Safe to say, I only stayed there for, uh, for another week and then left. That is fucking rogue. Dirty bastard. <laughs> I mean, that's grim and it's <laughs> like, it's work, so, like it take, do you want me to put a tablet in? <laughs> take longer it take, take less time run the fucking hot yeah, water in a ta- in the same like yeah. yeah. washing potatoes Fuck there's it. so many levels of wrong here yeah. there's, oh, yeah. there's obviously the chemicals there's the just heat. being a lazy twat yeah. there's the heat yeah. you're cooking it. then there's um all that grit is in your dishwasher yeah. it's recycling on every other fucking side. Yeah, I think that's the problem because maybe it's maybe yeah. dirt. Maybe like, that's a hack. Leave so the parboiled. Like maybe that's a hack. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and they're ready to go. Oh fucking awful. Nobody maybe this guy's a pioneer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nobody likes washing potatoes, but no. put them on a five minute cycle yeah. in your fucking Hobart machine. Yeah. Just just do it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. that. Dreadful. Thanks, Jack, though. And anyone who's got some, please do message in because we will read uh, the cowboy stories out. Um, okay, last thing before we go. This is new for this series. Um, we spoke about books on a weekly podcast, me and Paul did, because Paul's basically got a treasure trove of books and libraries uh, in his house here at Salt. And I sort of I forget or take for granted that books and recipes are a massive part of Chef's life. So we are going to get every guest to recommend a book for our listeners go and check out so are you a bit do you have a, have a lot of books or do you you know what's your I do I do I have loads and loads and people um, being in the internet world of non-reality people send you loads of books like everyone who's anyone oh, really? who, who, who sends a book out because they want you to and talk about it, whatever. Yeah. Which is great, and like it's always nice. To yeah, I'll be doing the same. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you will be getting a copy of mine. <laughs> uh, but there's there's a few that I'd sort of go back to all the time, like the uh, the complete rebuke on. I absolutely love that book, just because it's like a, a starting point for so many different things. Mm-hmm. It's just like if you want to know something that's like fundamentally classic done by someone who knows what the fuck they're talking about great place to start yeah mega have you got that one I've got some of his books yeah I don't have the full complete collection oh right it's, oh, it's a classic it's such, such a good collection it's just books. it's mm. just mega like yeah. if if you just sort of lost for a, a fundamental idea like it's good for someone who's still learning like me mm-hmm. but um, uh, still learning. 
Yeah. <laughs> Restaurant Nathan Atlow, love that book. Like yeah. really, really yeah. good book. Nice. All his books are nice. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. yeah that, that one is very good. Yeah. And if I can have one more, go on. Like, one the, more the, yeah. the Roots Tommy Banks, fucking love that book. It's a nice book. Just yeah. love that book, just yeah. because it's uh, intrinsic to where I used to live and like oh, what yeah. it's all about. And, like I absolutely love it. Yeah, that's nice. I think it's because when it tells a story or you know, and there's nostalgia built into it. It just ends up meaning a lot more when mm-hmm. you know about the story of when. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. And you must be doing one soon. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there's talk about it. So <laughs> it's, 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 well, it would lend itself perfectly to the online you'd, content. You'd like. think so, wouldn't you? So <laughs> <laughs> we shall see. <laughs> that was excellent. Okay, good. Uh, right, I think that's about it for this week's podcast. It's been an absolute joy. Thanks again to Ridgeview for providing us with tonight's nightcap. You can visit ridgeview.co.uk now to find out more and grab a bottle of their award-winning sparkling wine. Also, tabletalk-foundation.com. You can go and learn more about food education for kids, just like we were talking about earlier, as well as advice and information on mental and physical health to support the industry in hospitality, of course. Wherever you're listening, thanks for joining us. And uh, here's to you, Tom, for the nightcap. Thanks so much for coming on. We really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Cheers. 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 Cheers.